we deal with on the inside, our real targets is something that we never forgot. From the Gezi protests to causing disturbances in the ground, uh, many of the other attacks on our country, including the July 15th coup, if you cannot be successful on the inside, then there are designs of new threats along our borders as well. The, a group called Daesh tried to tried to strangle our country in blood. The PKK and its Syrian affiliate by growing them, giving them weapons and materials, put forth put forth this group on on top of Turkey for an attack. Democracy and our independence and those who attack it, the FETO terrorist organization and our struggle against them, those those people left us alone. And during this period, yes, our economy, they used as a weapon. Turkey, they thought that Turkey could not be able to sh shoulder the burden of these problems, but they were not able to bring Turkey to their knee. They were unsuccessful. With the, thank, thank, with the support of God and our people, we have been able to repel all these attacks. And not only with this, the threats, we moved to, we moved to dry these threats up at its source. Just in the last four years, inside our borders, 7,500, and outside of our borders, 8,500. Total, 16,000 terrorists have been neutralized. The terror organ organization Central Command and the area in North Iraq that they use as their headquarters, we have now imprisoned them there. The, the terror quarter in Syria and the terror organization that they tried to build in Syria, we've stopped on the western side of our border with Operation Euphrates Shield and Olive Branch. Also with Russia and Iran, the Astana process that we are partnering together, it was, we have stopped a massive humanitarian disaster from unfolding in Idlib. And now, east of the Euphrates, with the support of God and the heroism of our security services, I believe that we are going to be successful in this new Peace Spring operation as well. And we have started this operation. Valuable friends, the other operations that Turkey has conducted, the Peace Spring operation is also aimed at protecting the territorial integrity of Syria. The soil of Syria, one quarter of them, is under the control of the PKK YPG terrorist organization. They have invaded this area, and this group will not allow for the territorial integrity of Syria or the political unity of Syria, the PKK, YPG, this invasion and occupation by them, those that do not see this now speak against the steps that we take to protect the political unity and territorial integrity of Syria. Get out of our way and we will continue. The, our struggle against Daesh. Who, what have these people that are speaking, what have they done against Daesh? Those from their own countries, they exported Daesh to Syria. Daesh came from France to Syria. Daesh came from Germany and Holland to Syria. And we, we have neutralized, uh, we have re -ex we have extradited, returned 5,500 Daesh members to where they came from. These men are not truthful. They're
They're not honest. They are only those who just speak empty words. We make an impact. And our struggle right now against Daesh and against the PKKY, PGPYD, this struggle we are conducting with our honor. And we will continue to conduct it with honor. The Constitutional Committee in its first meeting on October 30th, this operation that we started will help the future of Syria planned in a more healthy manner. On the soil of Syria, the multiple foreign powers that are in Syria, now those are speaking against us who are trying to conduct an anti-terror operation. This is unacceptable for them to talk. I will not count them one by one, but some countries, I will speak some names of some countries. For, and I'm going to invite them to be honest for once. First, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia should look in the mirror. The, who brought Yemen to this situation? What situation is Yemen in right now? What condition is it in? There are ten thousands of people who have died. Hey, Saudi Arabia, first be held accountable for this. And now, in Yemen, we see the misery there. We want to account for this. Don't talk about us trying to take steps to, against the terror organization in Syria. You cannot talk against us on this topic. We are trying to hold the political unity of Syria together. You cannot speak against us on this topic. And Egypt, you, you have no right to speak. You, in your own country, you're the murder of democracy. With 52%, a Morsi that was elected with 52%, yes, in a court you allowed him to die. Maybe he did an operation. And even his family, you did not allow them to bury him. You did not allow his family to bury him. This is the type of murderer you are. Sisi holds a meeting with someone and has condemned this operation. Who cares if you condemn it? Who are you? We have no doubt of our cleansing so that we should doubt our prayers. We walk forward believing and we continue. The Syrian people, especially those on our border regions, are always asking, when are you coming? When are you coming? They are making calls for us. Now, of course, the regime and the way they continue to act erratically, if the regime was the regime it was eight or nine years ago, maybe everything would be much simpler. But unfortunately, now we, our love for the Syrian people is something that is not even talked about. But our job is to take on the terror organizations that try to occupy Syria, like Daesh, YPG, and PKK. We have no problems with our Kurdish brothers over there. Our only problem is with these terrorist organizations. <coughs> and people are trying to play this the wrong way. No, don't, don't try this. We and our Kurdish brothers over there no, we have no problems. We are struggling with the terrorist organization over there. Turkey is probably the only country that's the real official invited country on Syrian soil because we have always 
had a threat on our borders. And in our country, we have 3.6 million Syrian refugees here. A European Union, come to your senses. Look, I'm saying this one more time. Right now, the operation we are undertaking, don't try to make it, this look like an in, don't make this look like an invasion. It's not. We will, if you try this, I will open the door and I will send 3.6 million refugees to your countries. Now they're making money calculations. What the second payment, 3 billion euro, we're not going to send it. You haven't even kept any promises up till now. Have you? No. We, we didn't walk forward getting something from you. We spent 40 billion dollars. And God willing, we can spend that much more if needed. And we will continue forth. We will continue forth on our path, but we will open those doors. We're going to open those doors. You must know this. You can ne were never sincere with us all the way to back to 1963. Since you have always said, we'll take you this, that, certain problems regarding our accession process in the EU, you're never honest with us. You would never talk straight with us. Your lives are constructed on lies. Then then attack Tayyip Erdogan. Attack me all you want. On this road, we walk with solid steps. Valuable friends, no country has problems like this. Despite this, in Syria, despite closing their eyes to all developments and only criticizing Turkey and turning this into a tradition, I invite to conscience and moral. In Syrian soil, the real occupiers and people who do not speak against them, <laughs> but those who criticize Turkey for defending their rights and their national security, this is a sign of weakness. They could be weak, but Turkey is not weak. Turkey will do what's necessary and protect its rights. Also, we came to this point not by coincidence since the beginning of the Syria crisis in 2011. Even before that, the problem in this country the, we showed much effort to provide the democratic rights for every se segment of this country. The regime decided not to be, not to take the side of democracy. They tried to use force. Close to one million people, Bashar Assad has killed. These were his people. His own people, a man who killed his own people, murdered them, slaughtered them. That's the person that we're facing over there. And still, people ask, if he goes, who's going to come in his place? And there are leaders who ask this. So what happens if Daesh comes? That's what they ask. If you bring Daesh there, I have nothing to say about that. Let the Syrian people and see if the Syrian people would ever allow Daesh to come or come there. What is democracy? Democracy is the pe will of the people and respecting it. It's as simple as that. And the Syrian people would never bring, would never allow Daesh to come. They are they are very smart. They have not lost their minds. The years and years of civil war, the regime, Daesh, the PKK. PYD and their cruelty, 12 million Syrians have now left their home because of this. And almost half of them have had to leave their country. Now in our country, almost 4 million Syrians we have hosted for many, many years. And 330,000 are from, were brought back 
to areas that were secured by the Operation Euphrates Shield and Operation Olive Branch, especially the area of Jarablus and the remaining 3.6 million Syrian brothers who are here have, are continuing their lives across the 81 provinces of Turkey. And some people, without any embarrassment, say we are against the Kurds. That's the most rude statement ever. Right now, in Koba just from Kobani, 300,000 Kurds are still in our country that came here from Kobani, and there are guests they still live here. First, we should speak about this. They're still here. Why are we talking about this? America doesn't want to see this. The EU doesn't want to see this. Well, who are we going to explain this to? Well, at least our own people know this. And in Parliament, those there's a group inside Parliament that have placed their back against the terror organization. They have eyes, but they don't see. But we're going to show them. Either one way or another, we're going to show them. And we didn't stop here. Also, have helped three million Syrians inside their own soil and given the necessary support for them to survive in their country. We have spent four bill, forty billion dollars regarding Syria, and we have shown our human rights stance. We have proven this. Well, what other country has done this in the world? Come on out, tell me what have you done? What, can any country say we did this too? We fought against Daesh. I would like to see another country say we fought against Daesh too. None of them did it, but we did it. For those that criticize us, as I said, some. Arab and European countries, I wonder how many how many Syrians have they opened their hearts to? Valuable friends, the answer to these questions, we are waiting for them. The regime, the, the regime territory and the territory under the separatist terror organization, no one wants to return. Why? Because they don't want cruelty. They see them the same. The separatist terrorist organization and our, we have told our allies about how the problem and how decisive we are in solving this problem. And I want to say one more thing here. This struggle and under what's underneath it, you know what is? Our cross-border operation, there is, we are trying to stop the formation of a terrorist state on our southern border. That's what's there. We will not allow for this to happen. We will not allow an opportunity. We cannot look the other way. And there's more here, but I don't want to talk about this right here, right now. There's been a long period that has passed, and unfortunately, the steps that we were waiting for weren't taken, and people have tried to employ tactics to delay our country. But unfortunately, a country like Turkey, the, the rhetoric from our counterparts sadden us now here to all the NATO countries. I'm speaking to you. Firstly, America. We're Turkey. And we are a NATO member country. We know Article 5 very well. And the terror organizations, if they attack a, terror, a NATO member country, you cannot stay quiet. You don't have the right to. If you are a NATO member country, and inside the NATO member countries, those who are against NATO, and who's one of the countries that meets its requirements in NATO is Turkey. We pay our money constantly. We meet all the requirements. We're in good standing. And you, because some ragtag terror organizations, I hope you're not going to prefer this ragtag terror organization rather than your NATO member Turkey.
Is this where we are now? Uh, as such, we're going to have to do what's necessary, whoever it is. We, we ask for support from God and we will walk for, forward if there is no other way in a straight line. This is where we're going to go. Despite all of this, we have been very patient, tried to peacefully solve the problem. We have struggled to solve it. But in the end, as I've said before, we must cut our own umbilical cord. We have no other chance. We saw this. Now this peace spring operation, this is how we reached this period through a long process. Yesterday, beginning at 1600, first our air force hit, began to strike predetermined targets. Then our artillery and howitzers, again, they hit destroyed predetermined targets. And finally, at 2230 at night, our ground forces began now with all aspects of our military and participation they're moving in in the Tel Abiyad Rel Asul Ain area. Now, I'm going to be leaving leaving after this speech. Afterwards, Numan Bey will be leading the meeting. Our Minister of Defense will be sharing information with all of you. Ever since from the hour that the operation started till now, 109 terrorists have been neutralized. The terror organization and its help and its supporters have, have started a disinformation campaign to make our operation look bad. There are, of course, those injured besides the 109. There's also those who have surrendered. Operations are continuing. From the minute that we started the operation, they made the started spreading the lie that we launched rockets towards the Christian population of a village and they tried to raise a smear campaign against us. You're the ones that bombed it. You're the ones that sent the missiles. You rude person, you. This black propaganda machine, we are taking the necessary pre precautions against it. We will tell the truth to the whole world and public opinion. And even their leader, the, the, the leader of the Christians there, he even made a statement. He said, the, and they reiterated the trust they have in us. The, many, many houses inside Turkey were destroyed and civilians were hurt. Those who did not have the heart to come up against our soldiers attacked against civilians and they showed their true face. This is how rude they are. Their press organs, they show their kids. You are the child murderers. You're the ones that attack the women. You're their murderers. We are such a country that those who do not have the opportunity to defend the, themselves, a child or a woman, we would never raise our hand to them. This is our belief. This is haram in our beliefs. But God willing, these snakes, we will, in the most shortest time period, step on the heads of these snakes. Our Syrian brothers and their peace, for the peace and mind of our Kurdish brothers, from the other area, areas that we have not started the operation yet, we are working there. And when the time comes, we will show Turkey's power there as well. In the previous operations, whatever is we've done, we will do the same here. For the places that we that we go to, we will bring peace, trust. May God give our army the power for victory. 
May God protect our army. May God protect our people from everything bad, from the enemies. And those who support our spring, uh, peace spring operation, the, this, all political parties, to all our political leaders, our political members, to our NGOs, to our artists, to our journalists, to our sportsmen, to everyone, to people from all segments, I, I thank you on behalf of the people. The terror organization, and with its support, those who are in parliament, the so-called political party, I'm talking to you. My, You cannot show my army as an invading force. This is the most unmoral, most rude act. If there is an occupation or an invasion, that is an act of those who support you. You have not just stopped with being an occupier. You have also, as an occupying force, you have opened tunnels under under buildings, and you have created black sites for questioning at these places. But of course, now you lost these places. Now, when you don't have places like this in Turkey, you began opening tunnels in Syria. We're going to destroy those too. Those tunnels? No, you will not be able to find them anymore. Now, with all of this, the most important thank you goes to to our people who support this operation. With the help of our God, uh, with the help of God, and the support of our people, the the back of this country will never touch the ground. It will always stand tall. Valuable friends, the peace plan, the peace spring operation. Once it has secured this area, first we will. We will try to get everyone back to where they came from, to their homes. We will try to repair the demographic structure that the terror organization has destroyed. And we will try to bring life back to normal. As you know, the separatist terrorist organization and the places under its control has displaced one million people. And one third of these people our Kurdish brothers. I would like to underline this again. Our plan is to bring everyone back to their own home. For those, for if we have to open more clear, clearly, Arabs to their own house, Kurds to their own house, Turkmen to their own house, the Assyrians and other ethnic and religious groups back to their own homes. We are working to realize this. This way, the, those, who, those who tried to destroy the rich demographics of the area, we will return it back to normal. Now, those who want to go back to their country and who don't have a home to come back to, then for them, we will have, we are planning on rebuilding and providing areas for one million people. And we are hoping that with the international community that will finance this, we will be able to rebuild this. This way, Syria will be a place where the, everyone can come back and they will have an area where they can create a new future and we will be able to secure this for them. Turkey has no eyes on anyone's country, on their soil, on what they own. And at the same time, the Syrian National Army has no thoughts like this either. The, they walk with Turkey. Turkey will not allow will not allow anyone to act like this and they promise the people of the region the YPG and those who were forcefully conscripted our Syrian brothers I am making a call to you whether you're Arab 
whether you're Kurd, whether you're from another ethnicity, right now, leave, leave the PYD. Go. Those who want to protect their home, their families, our arms are always open to you. You can come. Valuable friends, we, during this operation, we will we cannot accept any type of harm done to civilians those who use weapons against us attack us set traps for us those are our targets and none of our Syrian brothers need to be afraid we have named this operation spring peace this is not a coincidence we know we will carve the terror organization out there from that area and we will take the necessary steps to secure a real peace. Our border and on the Syrian side is always full of springs and fountains. And with those springs and fountains, that's why we called it spring, a, a peace spring. We're not doing this operation alone. We are doing it with our Syrian brothers. And before the operation even started, the Syrian people and those who represent it by many NGOs and elders and tribal leaders made announcements of support to us. There is also there is also many news coming to us about criticism regarding the terror organization from people of the area, but hopefully from at a very short time from Manbij to the Iraqi border, we will bring peace and security to everybody and for the and we will disperse the black clouds above the Syrian people. Our strategic partner, unfortunately, from Minbij, in 90 days, they made us a promise to expel the PKK from there, but they did not keep this promise. 90% Mambij, Mambij, who is 90% Arab population, they have left this area for terror organizations. We know this very well. First, keep these promises. In Syria, with the participation of many different ethnicities and segments, the political unity and the so from the day that the political solution comes, we will continue to sit, walk with the Syrian people and try to help ease their problems. Valuable friends, the area that Daesh has threatened the most is Turkey. Also, at the same time, those who struggled the hardest against Daesh and won the most successes is Turkey again. So nobody has the right to criticize Turkey about a struggle against Daesh. Today, the threat of Daesh, those who do constantly repeat the threat of Daesh, those, we know the type of support they gave Daesh. You don't have to go too far away. Just in our country, and those who tried to cross from Turkey into Syria, Daesh members, if we told everyone how we were left alone to face this, no one would have the face to walk around in public. Our country up till today, all those who we thought were connected with Daesh, and a huge majority of them were not Turkish citizens, 7,000 people have been arrested. Many of these were foreign fighters, and 5,500 of them are still in, in our country in prisons. Again, it, within the framework of struggling against Daesh, from 151 countries, about 70,000 individuals, we have put a ban on entering Turkey. For those who could come to our all the way to the country, from 102 different countries, 7,600 people we have expelled from the country. And there are also many waiting to be expelled. Up to three years ago, the attacks on our border and the suicide attacks in our big cities 
we were forced to have a cross-border operation. The Euphrates Shield operation ended up neutralizing over 3,000 Daesh members. And in this operation, our security forces gave 72 martyrs. And those Syrians who ran to the front to support us gave 680 martyrs. And they, this was a legendary performance. They, now the Syrian National Army, the, this name, this structure, now in the Operation Olive Branch, our security services gave 52 martyrs. And also the, our Syrian brothers who fought with us were 413. And during this operation, the amount of terrorists that we neutralized was above 4,600. As you can see, in Syria, at no time has Turkey ever tried to use a terror organization. The complete op opposite, Turkey has crushed their heads. And up till today, with the Peace Spring operation, the Pri the Daesh members in prison, I'm asked, what are we going to do with them? Well, first, first of all, we are not a country that avoids responsibility. We will not allow Daesh to be a pain once again. We will also we also do not want them to be a problem for any other country. So the areas that are under our control and will be under our control, whatever is necessary to these to do to these Daesh members, we will do it. Those who need to be in prison, we will be head in, held in prison. Those who need to be extradited or expelled, that's where we will send them. And for the kids and women left, we will have a rehabilitation program and try to win them back into the community. Turkey, once it has control of this area, will not allow Daesh for a revival, and everyone should be, everyone should know this. This assurance that we have given, and we, I give this assurance to the whole world. Valuable friends, we for a thousand years in this soil, we have lived together. From Sultan Ar Ar Arslan, to, and he opened the doors to make the uh, Anatolia our home. In Malazgirt, we all struggled. And no ethnic or religious minority was ever was ever systematically discriminated against. If we had this type of understanding, the area's demographic structure would have changed a thousand times in a thousand years. But all the indigenous people, the indigenous beliefs of this area, the indigenous cultures continue to live in this area. Now go from Malazgirt to the west. There used to be Kurds, there used to be Arabs, there used to be Zazans, Turks. Now, where are they now? Have they been dispersed? Yes, they've been dispersed. I am from Sirt, a groom of Sirt. Now, there's almost no Arabs in Sirt. Why? Because the terror organization there have expelled the Arabs in that area out of Sirt and forced them to migrate. Like, come and tell me the contrary. You can't. Because these are on record. These are known. These are truths. Well, who are you explaining what to? If, if you're looking for an occupation force, you are the occupation force. So it means that we have no problems with one another. Okay, if we don't, then why are all these problems being realized? Whenever a hand comes from outside into the region, it has always made everyone here an enemy against each other. And in, in this atmosphere of hate, they have fought for their interests. Look at Diyarbakir. In Diyarbakir, as you know, the, the party, the so-called par political party, for m weeks and months, the mothers that have been sitting in front of that political party, how are we going to explain it to them? The sons of those mothers who have been kidnapped to Kandil, how are they going to be held accountable? Or let's, for areas, for people who have taken them to other areas as well, who's going to be held accountable? 
I want to hold your account. There's also a kandil, and then there's another kandil. That's the type of structure it is. And all the plans are made there, and then they take you from the arm and say, what? Kandil, another border, they send them out there. Valuable friends. The historical truths show this. We have no friends except for each other, and we have no other to receive support than each other. In the past period in Syria, Iraq, Northern Africa, and before in the Balkans, the Caucasus, they, they, they are examples of this truth. And that's why at every opportunity I tell my brothers to all the innocent that it's time for unity. I call for unity. That's why I said one minute. That's why I say Jerusalem was our red line. And this is why I say the world is bigger than five. And this is why. And this is why I say justice for justice for everyone, comfort for everyone, peace for everyone. And this is why, without discrimination, we have hosted four million Syrian refugees on our soil. And this is why we work to we work and go down to the field so these Syrian refugees can go home. This is why we also think about the peace and security of those around us just as much as we do domestically, because we are Turkey. Because we, not only to make live, because we work just to allow to live and support life and peace. This is what our history asks for. This is what our beliefs ask for. Our history is filled with examples of this. And hopefully the spring peace spring operation will add a golden page to our legendary history. And may God help our people, our army, our people, and our brothers. My friends, Yes, may God willing give us victory. I believe in this. And along with this, yes, we have sent our soldiers, our boys across, and our religious affairs directorate. And this morning at the mosque, they have read prayers of victory. And our soldiers have been sent away with prayers. May God help us. And hopefully in the shortest time, this victory will be realized. And this way, peace and security will be brought to Syria and also to our region, we'll have peace and security, and we will continue down our path with concrete steps. And with these feelings, I send my greetings. Of course, I want to say one more thing. Valuable friends, you know, as they say, the Kurds have no place in the AK Party. You know how they say that? Today, in Parliament, inside AK Party group, there are 291 members of Parliament. 50, ones, 50 of them are from Kurdish roots. They, unfortunately, they forced me to say this in the end. Because what's important for us is not the roots or the ethnicity. Their humanity is important to us. AK Parti Genel Başkanı Cumhurbaşkanımız Sayın Recep Tayyip Erdoğan'a
Hitaplarından dolayı teşekkürlerimizi ve saygılarımızı arz ediyoruz efendim.